<laughs> I'm going to do this presentation sitting down because I'm lazy. And then I work at Neo in case you haven't seen me around in office. This is my first tech talk, so please be gentle. Um, I'll be happy to take any questions at, in the end, at the end. So, my talk is supposed to be on the magic of T marks, but I think that's a bit overselling. So, 10 tips would be slightly better. In case you haven't noticed, I work at Neo, and the only reason I put this up is so that I can be on the roadmap to awesome. <laughs> Unfortunately, someone archived it. <laughs> so anyway, let us learn some. Let us learn some T marks. Tip number one. Tip number one is always to have a T marks session on. This is useful for people who want to get into the habit of T marksing all the time, like myself. Does anyone not know what T marks is? All right. So. Uh, TMAX stands for Terminal Multiplexer. It is a program which lets you handle multiple terminal sessions, but in one window. So you don't have like you don't need to have like multiple terminal windows. You just have to have one, and you have can have multiple sessions in it. So anyway, tip number one: always have a TMAX session on. It is useful for people who want to get into the habit of T-marxing, like myself. And another reason that this is useful is especially for cases where you're in the middle of something, like programming, and like, oh my god, I forgot to t -max. So that's like super useful. So this example works in item two. Uh, I didn't bother looking into the same for like the default terminal app in the Mac OS or even in Linux, but I assume that there are some ways of doing that. So let me show you. So the idea is you get the preferences under profile and you'll see a line that says syntax at start. You paste that line in. So once you do that, what that line does is it will create attempt to um, attach a session to base and if it doesn't, it creates a new session called base. So this means that each time you open up your terminal window, it straight away goes into a Tmux session all the time. So tip number two is about synchronizing of panes. This is my one of my favorite tips. So what we see here, there's four panes. We loaded it with REPLs, which is a read, eval, print loop of four different languages. So we have Haskell, Ruby, Elixir, and Python. What synchronized pane gives us is that it simultaneously sends keyboard input into all the panes at the same time. So let me show you how cool this is. So I set synchronized panes to turn on, and then when I type, all four panes get the input immediately. Super cool. So why does uh, Haskell return zero? Uh, it's actually it's 30, but it's like cropped. Uh, so you can apologize to the projector joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's We're replacing it. Obviously, in this case, we can see that the Elixir repo is far superior because it has colored output. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, demonstrating that repos of four different languages is a pretty cool party trick to impress developers, but nothing more than that. You could, however, imagine that you have a Tmux session with four different terminals, and you want to run something like Ansible, or you want to run something repeatedly on four different SSH sessions. Tip number three, refreshing Tmux. It's not really magical, because before Tmux, I'm prone to refreshing the ter terminal using um, command L. So that what that does is it clears the entire terminal. Unfortunately, that just messes up your entire Tmux session. Mm -hmm. So just to illustrate, this is my typical Tmux experience. I will be happily programming when suddenly my fat fingers will hit command K for some reason and it makes, makes me really mad. Thankfully, the easy fix is to bind prefix R to reload the Tmux configuration file and everything is back to a nice state again. So you just have to do that. It essentially tells Tmux to source the configuration again, which refreshes uh, and reloads Tmux. 
I didn't realize that someone already had created a TMUX plugin manager until I foolishly volunteered to do this presentation. Uh, I won't bore you the details for <coughs> installation because it's pretty simple. But once you get the plugin installed, it's only a matter of selecting the plugin you want and pasting the entry into tmux.conf. If you have ever used a bundle of pathogen in Vim, the process is basically the same. You declare whatever plugins you want by supplying the GitHub username and repo, save the configuration file, and then go ahead and press prefix plus capital I to install the plugin. So let me show you how the entire process looks like. You open your tmux file, you scroll, and then you just include whatever plugins you want to install, save the file, command prefix I, and you're done. Tmux comes with a bunch of plugins, and one of the more interesting ones is Tmux Resurrect. This plugin persists um, a Tmux environment across system restarts. So, yeah. I have a Vim session here on the left pane, and on the right, I have a Rails console and Rails server, respectively. In order for Tmux Resurrect to persist a Vim session, you have to install Tim Pope's Vim Obsession. He has the cutest name. Obsession. Obsession. Yeah. Vim Obsession makes it easier to record a Vim session. I haven't played with it much, but just let me show you the entire process. So when you just do obsess and it will just track your entire Vim session. So once it started tracking, okay, over here I have like Vim and HTOP on another Tmux window. I'll hit this command over here to save the entire session. And then now I will kill the server. So that's like a system restart. So in order to restore the thing, I press that and everything restores back. Super nice. Uh, it's not a continuous thing, it is a save point. Yes, and I will get to that. But then, manually doing prefix control S and R is very lame. And you can imagine saying that in Carlos's voice. <laughs> <laughs> See? That's where Tmux, sorry? I'm the screen, I don't use Tmux. <laughs> so old school. So that's where Tmux continuum comes in. This plugin continuously saves your Tmux environment at regular intervals, and it also automatically restores your Tmux session when you restart your computer. So the next tip is a short one. I think I learned this either from Rahu or Gabe. Zoom was introduced in Tmux 1.8, and Tmux zooming is super useful when you're looking at test failures or you're trying to look through like logs. Here's how zooming looks like. So yeah, nothing surprising. <laughs> Tip number eight is to navigate seamlessly between Vim splits and Tmux panes. It can be very confusing to figure out sometimes if you're in Vim split or a Tmux pane or just a Tmux pane. So navigating between two of them used to be like super uh, big hassle until T Vim Tmux Navigator came along. So here we have a Tmux session with three panes. The left half consists of two Vim splits and the right hand side contains of two Tmux panes. With Vim Tmux Navigator, I can navigate across Vim splits and panes using just Control J, HJKL. So let's see how that looks like. Yeah, Control HJKL, super nice. It is also assuming you remember to find your control W H control W K to just control yeah, it. I was gonna ask that. Right, so you have to do that in Vim and also do that in Tmux, which is here. Oh nice. Yeah. Okay. Vim Tmux and Vim and Tmux make a really nice combo to run a Ruby test. So this one I learned from Kate. The ingredients to get this to work are the above. You need three plugins. Again, Tim Pope's Vim Rails, Vmux, and Vim Turbux. Once you get these three installed, you will see how we can make our Ruby testing workflow much better. So here we have a specs for a MicroPost model. 
So my cursor is over there, where, on line 22. When I hit leader small t, it runs the entire spec. But when I run leader capital T, it runs a focus test. So you just run the test underneath the cursor. Super handy. All right, last one. Finally, and probably the most important tip, RTFN. There's a lot of unknown commands or even Easter eggs in Tmux. For example, you can ask Tmux to give you the current time with prefix T, and a prefix question mark gives you a list of like Tmux commands. So that's all I have. Questions? I have my favorite Tmux command. Go. Clock mode. Mm. So if you open the small spin type in clock mode for the uh, command. What what I do? Control A colon clock. <coughs> Control A colon clock. Oh, my bad. <laughs> ah, wait, hold on. I will need to do this. Super useful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so any other questions? I was just thinking for Daryl, he always forgets to take his breaks as well. I put a timer on the other one. So why Tmux is so screen? Screen is old, and screen is not as performant as Tmux. So for example, if I want to have like... Sorry? Screen doesn't, the screen will use the support. That's my answer. Yeah, okay. Screen is not what? Screen cannot support vertical support. Screen never supported vertical I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, they do in the newer version. They might do. I know, but I mean, I know. Available on Red Hat. Yeah, yeah. But I know, I know. Back in the day, back in the day, back in the day, yeah. 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 Yeah.
right? So, Daryl, how are you going to begin your climb? You want the arrow keys and you wait five minutes, right? Pick control A. Pick control E. Uh, Learn those and they work everywhere. And yeah, that's yeah, a better yeah. method. Yeah, yeah, seriously. All of these logic commands are also Emacs. Yes, yeah, it's true. Um, <laughs> Bin mode and Emacs mode is where your commands for Tmux. There's so, two modes. Yes, it will work everywhere because it's a green line job. Mm -hmm. So it, it works on IRB, it works in a shell. It does yeah. not work on Novena. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Somebody's the Novena green line seems to be completely warped. Who cares? But anyway, um, okay. the, the the search caught the, the search. Yes. Uh, Search up your buffer. Ah. Yeah, control A left bracket. Yep. This one. Actually, and yeah. then you can question mark yeah. and forward slash to search through. Yeah. Enter to start the select and space to finish the select. Yeah. yeah. You can copy the clipboard as well. And you can copy the clipboard. What is this one? Copy the Enter. Enter. Yep. But I mean, that was something you should be obvious. So then the right for record case. Yes, right. Yes, sir. Yeah, the first time I used Tmux, I remember, because we didn't buy it, we didn't have the uh, control HJKL that you switch. Mm -hmm. We had to actually do control AQ and then select the key number. Ah, so okay. You we were to show everything. And by default, it, uh, the number it starts from zero. Right. So in, in order to do like it's like a thing, you gotta move your right hand part away. Very fast. Yeah. So <laughs> what we usually do is um we set a base index to start from one instead. Ah. Yeah, okay. 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 Yeah, the time is off. Yeah. And also increase the delay so that the program slow reaction time. So that the number. Tmux.com. So like this. This one. Yeah. Same base index one. Yeah. And also I had a want to increase the delay. After you show the pin numbers? Yeah, because it's like Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, how do you rearrange your pains? This is cool. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Control, well, prefix that's and price. Yes. Yeah. Is that a plug-in bed? No. That's in braces or price? Yeah, that's in Tmux. That's right. I'm trying to do the braces. What's that? That's 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 yeah, so there's a, there's a command where you press um, prefix W. It lets you... Yeah. It will. So what, what are Same as like control, like prefix S also gives you all the sessions. Yeah. Another one when you're doing a remote band that is supposed to have a remote session on, say, uh, some other computer and two people are logged into the same thing. Normally, if you want to detach from the remote session, you do control A P. But suppose you want to kick out the other person, you do control A shift P. Then you can choose who you want to kick out. Ah. Right. Control A shift P. Sorry? I think it's the only one to be attached as small d. Yeah. Yeah. No, small b is to detach. Yeah. But if you do Big cap, d. capital B, it will show you the list of all the people who are seeing it. Oh, ah, okay. So I assume I need to go back to Tmax, um, prefix, shift, capital D, right? Yeah. yeah. So you can pick which one you're interested in. So you can choose which one and then. Nice. Nice. Oh, so, another uh, nice thing about Tmax is. Well, I used to use it a lot with a, you know, like, I have a server that's popping up with a screen and then I'll uh, attach the same thing through several laptops. Right. So you have several terminal windows or consoles attached to the same session. It will actually resize itself to the oh, smallest yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was what Michael, Michael had. So they did a resize and then lots of dots to yeah. fill in the Yeah, but blanks. then when we detach the other one, it will resize back. Yeah. Uh, it did not, in this case it did not repeat, oh. but I think it's redraw. Oh, it pretty works. So, so uh, I term identifies as X term. You can change it. Mm. By default, it does. That's just a terminal setting you enter. Yeah. Okay, let's get to the other position. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, thank you.